Hey guys, Tyre here, bringing you a 1v1 today. We are on Langraskaya, playing for today's spawning in the north. We have Luna playing as OKW. And his loadout is Elite Armor, Scavenge, and Fortifications. Currently ranked 15 as OKW, so a very highly ranked player. In the south, we have Meister Yoon playing as US forces and his loadout is tactical support armor and heavy cavalry currently rank 13 as US forces so probably one of the closest matches in terms of rankings as you'll ever get so it should be a good match that being said we all know that OKW is struggling a little bit at the moment interesting to see that he runs straight past this uh, you know, connecting point and go straight for the munitions, putting down a bit of wire and all that cover there. Also saw some fast reinforced wire on that, pretty standard though. But at the same time, I mean, this fuel point not being contested, so it looks like the US player is going to secure a bit of a uh, early game fuel advantage, just a small one. We have a Kugel coming out kind of late, honestly. Get us out of here. Quite often you see players go for one Fork Street here into the Kugel. It's gone for two, so it's going to be a late Kugel. A capture point is under attack. Which I'm uh, not too much of a fan of. But a Kugel can be very useful on this map. Even though it's not the largest map, you can make those like nice harassing plays just cap up all down the flank whilst... The opponent is occupied fighting on the rest of the map. It looks like his strategy is to try hold the line with his Fox Rangers into the critical buildings and use that Kubel to do the capping. He's gone for another Fox Rangers squad. Which is uh, probably a good idea. I know some players try to make do with three, I mean, uh, like three units before trying to tick. Uh, I feel like that's not strong enough with OKW. They're just really just house and heavy cover slow paced combat so far. We've got some riflemen moving up in the centre. Should be able to overwhelm this lone Volksunity squad. The squad's about to get flushed out of the garrison though, so maybe this will be able to rotate, or perhaps the Kubel. It looks like the Kubel's heading over now, but can't, can't drive past this because well, the squad's hit via one. Get anti-tank grenaded. He's going for another Fox Trinity squad. This is a strategy I've, I've tried a few times, and you can have a really strong early game with it. And we actually only saw three rifles from Meister Yoon, so it makes sense if he's going for the Lieutenant. Yeah, he is. We're going to see an M20, I guess. And the same 20 could catch Luna off guard, obviously very good at chasing down the Kubel and very very late tech going for this many Fox Trinities and a Kubel. Since your tech's going to be late you just don't have the manpower to get it up early. So no Panzerfaust. The same 20 could do a lot of damage. And also much later STGs on all these Fox Trinities means this lieutenant with his bar and his Thompson should be able to bully, bully all these fox creators around. There's the truck in production now. A bit late for Luna, honestly. Should have got this going probably about a minute ago. Our supply line's cut. Germans are making a push. Lieutenant charging in. Yeah, those guys just get shredded. Even uh, charging across that negative cover road there, Lieutenant just 
so much more firepower. But the squads finally lift the safety of the garrison going for the fuel. Kibble's been repaired. There's a good damage here. We've actually got a Rakitten. So upon seeing the lieutenant straight away thinking I need some counter to a light vehicle and goes to that Rakitten. In between you try and chase it down. I'm not sure if he's got the armored skirts or not. Must do. Oh, but he doesn't quite kill him. I think he should have dived in a bit deeper there, honestly. Saw the truck, so he shouldn't know there's no Faust. And even though these flak placements could have done a lot of damage, of course he does have access to the smoke. So probably could have escaped pretty easily there. And yeah, all he needed was one more burst and that coup would have gone down. And that is going to be mechanized. What you would expect going for this many squads. The most you probably have to tick captain in order to counter this. Nice cut off here. He did that whilst he was repairing his M20. Very efficient play. And we have a Rakesa creeping around in camouflage trying to find the M20, but not having much luck. So we've got a M20 mine down there. Hoping to catch that Luke's. And we're actually going to see an ambulance and. A 50 cal machine gun coming up from Meister Yoon. Heavy machine gun team ready for orders. 50 cal, I, I do really like it against OKW. Okay, feet, and it can be okay against the looks. It does a little bit of damage when you activate those armor piercing rounds. Plus 10 penetration, plus 25% damage. Over here. Does alright. But uh, generally just gets flanked, of course. So you need to have riflemen nearby with their snares, and maybe maybe the bazooka squad nearby, or maybe staying inside a garrison. So you can't really get flanked, and you get all that damage reduction. Well, there are the first couple STGs coming online now for Luna. That means these riflemen are going to start losing these engagements. He did go for the ambulance, I remember, so they will at least be coming out at full health, which does help his cause, whereas these guys coming out at low health could quite easily drop a couple models straight away in a firefight. Meaning that, you know, straight away you're down to three models instead of five, and you could actually lose a fight against a full health rifle squad. So that is a good option, you know, going for the ambulance. As a way of keeping your combat strength high instead of just going for bars. And uh, more efficient in terms of manpower, obviously. Well, yeah, in the long run, in the long term. Yeah, it's being a lot more expensive than uh, the bar upgrade. Crouch have cut our supply line. Frontline units are being hung out to dry. Going for the cutoff once again, man. This northern cutoff is so brutal. Kitten finally crawls into position, gets one shot off. Oh, uh, did he get in range? Almost got in range for a Panzerfaust. Oh no, he didn't even have the munitions for a Panzerfaust. Okay, W Panzerfaust costs 35 for some reason. You have to remember, and everything's getting forced back. Luna kind of on the ropes here. Here comes the Luke's. But, uh, you know, about 10 minute looks, this is very, very slow. Usually, uh, you want about 8 minutes 30. And some people can even get it out around 6 minutes if you're just creaming it. Luna going for another truck. So this is going to be the battle group for sure. Needs that healing. It's got a lot of low health functionary ideas, which means, of course, here we going for a commander with call It's probably the Flak Panzer, but the Sturmflag is an outside chance because obviously 
Going for both the battle group and the mechanize. There's no way you can tech tier 4 as well. Oh, he's running the truck onto the field, but I think this may just be his rally point because he did that with the first truck as well. Oh, and obviously he doesn't have nearly enough fuel to put down his tier 4. But you kind of do have to set your rally points a bit further away than you used to. You used to, you know, maybe set it just on the doorstep of your base. And because your troops had to run, like, from the side of the map, it would take them a lot longer to get there. So it give you time to react and move them to where you actually wanted to go. But now that they come out of your base, they actually hit the field a lot earlier. You don't want them to be sitting around idle, so you have to move your rally points out a little bit further. Well, here's the Stuart. Oh, but he manages to take down the M20. Why didn't he smoke? Why didn't he do anything right there? Maybe it was bait, but... That was bad. That was very, that was very bad. M20 goes down and didn't even drop the bazooka as far as I can see. But of course... Stuart, very good counter to the Lurks, and because the Lurks came out so late, hasn't really got much done at all. Five kills. We're getting in a nice spot, though. He's, oh, no, he gets flanked by the captain. He's on such low health. Drops two models immediately, he has to retreat. Oh, no! Oh, he hits that M20 mine. Down he goes. Players used to be so aware of those mines, but you know, it's been a long time since the M20's been in the meta. People often forget to get the minesweeper when you're facing against it these days. And that came back to bite Lena in the behind. Now Mr. U Meister Yoon, gonna sit on top of that cutoff. Look at this map control from him, just dominating. And this is absolute nightmare for OKW. If you lose your first like, uh, vehicle as OKW, you are, uh, without getting much in return, you are just in so much trouble. So hard to come back from. Unlike every other faction. It's just uh, really hard to come back as OKW. Fifty cal, kind of getting flanked here, but it looks like they're going to maybe fight garrison to garrison. Let's see the stern pioneer Shrek from Luna. That's an interesting choice. suppose now he's like oh well the M20's gone probably only planted one mine don't really need the sweeper and of course use forces don't really have access to mines unless he goes for heavy cavalry or the uh, assault engineers but even if you go um company just about nobody gets the assault engineers because they do bleed a lot very expensive to reinforce and not very durable Oh, this squad here is going very, very low. Is he going to notice? Yeah, there he goes. Going for the cutoff again, but we do have an MG34 set up here. Oh, but he packed it up just as the squad ran in there. That is horrible timing. I think the neutralize still would have happened. Of course, the MG34 doesn't have the highest rate of suppression, but. Oh. Gun crew. Oh, there was a 50 cal that went down there. Is that two infiltration grenades? Must have been. Alright. I don't know, either way, that is a good pickup for Luna taking down that 50 cal. That was really. Causing a lot of troubles as he tried to push back onto his cutoff every time. 
And that is a USF mortar for my students. I'm in a pretty safe spot. Just camp in this house and lay into all of these troops from Luna and Luna really on the ropes here. Constantly getting cut off. Very poor fuel control. And has of course gone for scavenge. Just about the only viable I could ever use. Commander in 1v1s. For this very reason, I mean, imagine trying to tip and get a medium tank right now as Luna. Impossible. Wow, there goes the Kubel to the rear echelon. I thought I might get away there, maybe some uh, lucky penetrations. But this has allowed. Luna to push back onto the field, going for another MG, which is interesting because he just saw the mortar. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Personally, I may have invested in another. Okay, there he goes. He cancels it and goes for the rocket. And that's what about. That's what I was just about to say. I probably would have gone for another rocket instead. Because he's got to need the extra anti-tank support once the uh, flat pants at the field. Meister Yoon. We're going to have some kind of tank himself. Our supply lines have been cut. And the mine going down also a good decision. Got very little amount of munitions left. But this is a very common pathway for tanks. It's not an actual road. A lot of tanks do end up driving down there, and here comes the flak panzer right as soon as he had enough fuel, he called that in. So it takes a Shrek and a Rakitin, and that's Vet 1 on the Rakitin. That is exactly what he needs. Now it can move at regular speed and camouflage. This is when it actually becomes good. Well, yeah, I'd say it's good at Vet 1. It's always all the issues where it takes forever to aim. And uh, constantly hits the ground and stuff, but at least you can organize some good ambushes. Oh, here comes the flak panzer. Gotta worry, there's a couple bazookas mixed in with these squads. Oh, he runs over that mine. Sound two models. I'm sure, he's hoping to hit that with a vehicle. And that is a M10 in return. Running straight for the flak panzer, runs straight into those double raquettes, though. One of them gets suppressed. They about face and they have to retreat. Here comes the steward in from the side. That's probably going to be a dead flat panzer. No, M10 kind of derps around a bit. Here comes the Shrek squad. Oh, but he snipes it at max range. Down goes the flat panzer. Oh, that is horrible. And there goes the machine gun as well, mortar shot lands. Oh, everything's gone wrong here for Luna. He had a pretty good position there. M10 drove straight through both his raquettes. They only managed to get one shot off each. It takes four shots from the raquettes to knock out the M10, so it wasn't enough. Didn't have any squads nearby for a Faust either. Which is uh, so important against the M10, they're so fast. Gotta have those Fausts to reduce their mobility, otherwise you'll get ruined and Luna probably just gonna have to go for another flak panzer. At the very least, most of you now won't be able to call in a Pershing, so I suppose that's a silver lining, but M10 is very, very strong. Very good at crushing, of course. And also, it's just so cheap, man. This, like, yeah, 300 fuel. I mean, 300 manpower, 10 fuel. Such good value. Considering you don't have to tick, obviously. He's managed to skip major to get it. In both these plays skipping tick, of course, because, you know, we, we are playing a top, top level game. You wouldn't want to tick. <laughs> all about the call-ins, baby. 
Things seem to be evening out a bit more now, though. Luna's starting to get some good variancy on these Fox Green Deers. And he's gone for another MG34. <laughs> okay, so he lost one and he, he's made two more. Should help steady the ship at the very least. It's not going to win in the, the match, but should steady, steady the game out a bit more. Give him a bit more time to react. Save up for that flak panzer. Is easily dodged and now these MGs <laughs> just becoming a real headache for both players honestly is that more okay, that is doing some capping that's a real waste he needs it against all these machine guns here comes the MT and going for the crush gets one two watch the retreats the Burakitans connect though one needs to get V1 as well. M10 backs away. That's why the M10 is so strong. It's such a good tank destroyer and so good at forcing retreats thanks to its ridiculous crush. It's going to be NG34 versus NG34. This one packs up though at just the wrong time. Stuart has been really inactive since he killed that flag pans. It's just been kind of sitting around, not up to much. Enemy forces now has 300 points remaining. But Double Kittens just going in deep, perhaps hoping to catch this M10. Doesn't quite get it though. Close call and a uh, good idea. Probably, you know, he realized that took a lot of damage here. Maybe repairing somewhere over here. Oh, but he loses. The VIP-1 Rakitin, that is horrible. He really needed that. He's actually made another Rakitin, so he had three for a split second there. Now it's gone. And that is a bulldozer. And this is what Rakitins really hate. The thing with the Sherman Bulldozer, it actually has a little bit more health. I think it's 7... 720 or 760. So it takes 5 anti-tank gun shots to kill. And that makes a really big difference. If you've got double Rakitans shooting at this, quite often you'll get 4 hits on it. Because it's a bit slower than most other Shermans, but... Chances of getting 5, very, very slim. And it can one hit white Rakitans like nobody's business why Armour Company is in just about every US Forces plays load out these days. So strong. It's so good. Are we... And there is the Wolverine and the Rakitin. Stolen Rakitin going to work on that Flak Panzer forcing it away. These machine guns, man, all this blob gets suppressed here. Probably gonna have to retreat shortly. There it goes. He's just struggling to even hold on to his own VP, going for some harass on the other side. Stuart shutting that down. Flag Pan's having to back away. Has he got the repair upgrade? No. The bulldozers are feeling a bit bold going straight into the base here. He's <laughs> right in the corner of his base. Trying to heal up and reinforce repair. And Sietch. Rakitin camped out over here. Not a bad spot for it to, you know, maybe do a flank and maybe at some point come out and do some capping later. But may need it because he's facing up against a lot of armor here in the center. No, nope, M10's over here. Looking for some crush. So this could actually work out quite well. Gonna have a triple cap very shortly from my Unis. Running away with this game. Going in for the crush. Gets one model. A kid and trying to move up under the cloak. But very slow of course. Here's the Faust. Is that two Fausts? 
Yes, double Faust, which gave it the engine damage. This squad gets forced away by the overwhelming number and actually drop a bar. But it doesn't really matter too much because the only thing that can pick this up at the moment are the stern pioneers. And obviously the bar's not that much better than the STG that they have. Which is the problem, you know, with the uh, Fox Trinidad ECG upgrade taking up two weapon slots. I don't think the PPSH Conscript upgrade does the same, so perhaps that needs to be revised because the state of uh, double LMG blobbing at the moment it's really a bit of a handicap if you can't pick up those dropped double LMGs. So it should be one of the main handicaps your opponent could pick them up. But this is not the case thanks to the uh, double slot. We just see a brief skirmish there, Stuart kind of deciding against diving in. I see you not wanting to throw away this huge up, uh, huge lead, which I can understand. Here you got Luna on the ropes. Going for another raquette, and he's just going, he's just going ham on these raquettes. Good thing is he's managed to keep all his fox units alive, and they're heading up. So they're going to start hitting, you know, bit four, bit five. There's the riflemen already at bit three. They've got nowhere to go. As good as they're going to get. Kittens connecting with the bulldozer, forcing it back for repairs, but that's not too much of a hurdle. Oh, but could he? Oh, he takes down the flak panzer. He could. I mean, uh, not flak panzer, the kitten. The flak panzer takes it out. Could destroy this. Probably would be a good idea. Because I don't think he needs three of them. He doesn't want that being used against his flak panzer once again. Here comes the Wolverine trying to find the flak panzer. Backed away now. I've got the stern pioneers there for the Shrek. Probably gonna no. I thought he was gonna connect with one Shrek and then retreat, but retreats before the first Shrek lands. Here comes the Flak Panzer and the three Rakettons seem to be trying to get the hell out of there. Is successful, that smoke really helping him out. And there's the Rakitten doing his famous hit the ground shot. All famous in Co2 games. And they're getting close to enough fuel for another flat panzer, and I. Imagine that's what he's going to be going for. We're actually seeing another bulldozer here. And there goes the Stuart. Three Rakettons all in the line. What is the bulldozer doing, man? What is he What is he doing? He just lost his... Okay, he's coming in from the side. Yes, he did recruit that other Rakettons. It may work for him. Let's pop the blitz. M10 going in for the Flak Panzer, decides against it, going to probably take a Faust, no not quite, I thought he was in range there. And remember this is Langraskaya, very hard to keep those triple caps cooking because those VPs are so far apart. Does lead to more drawn out games. Usually on uh, quite a lot of maps when you're this far ahead like Meister Yoon is. Uh, I mean, we, the game would just about be over, but it's still got 175 BPs to go. It's quite a lot. Still plenty of room for a comeback, especially if Meister Yoon uh, is a bit reckless in front of those Rakettons. Now with four of them. If they all connect at once, can one shot the Wolverine. 
Oh, but there goes one of those STG squads. In fact, he lost another one that I must have missed. So he's down two squads. And at this stage, honestly, my student could probably just decrew all of his vehicles and chuck them in the base to reduce his pop cap attacks and just fight infantry versus infantry because four Rakesans is not going to do anything against masses of riflemen. Just standing in the scatter of this howitzer barrage, what is he doing? Very lucky that that didn't cost him a squad. And here comes another flak panzer. Only got one M10 here. Trying to use the building to keep it safe. One more hit and this will go down. He's backing away now, but so is the M10. Bulldozer comes back in, but pretty bad accuracy and penetration. Pops the smoke smoke off two of them but there's another two back there I don't understand what he's doing with this bulldozer yeah it doesn't even penetrate and there goes the bulldozer here comes the M10 around from the side though takes down the flak panzer but the bulldozer is quite a lot more expensive than flak panzer 40 more fuel got 100 more manpower it's a second M10 good decision as I was saying, doesn't really need the anti-infantry from the bulldozers. I don't know, this is, this, is a this is a tough balance to get, you know, so many raquettes. Do you want the bulldozer to try and wipe them? I don't think he's been getting those really juicy bulldozer one-shot wipe kills. That seem to happen whenever I play a Sokia W. <laughs> but, uh... You, also, you got to remember when playing with the bulldozer, you got to use the tap ground a bit more. Just relying on right click seems to be not as effective on uh, things like the bulldozer, the, uh, the broom bear. So maybe that's what most of you is not doing, and then maybe that's why he's not getting those. Big, big hits. See, I mean, this bar has been sitting down here for probably, what, five minutes now? Just because nothing can pick it up. All these guys got all their slots occupied. Oh, we got a lot of raquettes all connecting on the M10. Oh my god, if that other one had actually landed, that would be a dead M10. <laughs> Of course, it, of course it doesn't connect because it's a, it's a Rakitin. You gotta temper that uh, kind of bullshit mechanic of being able to stealth with terrible accuracy to kind of make it a bit more fair. But there goes the bulldozer. I don't know what he's expecting. Should know by now that he's up against four Rakitins and they were right here shooting at the M10. So. Very easy to just turn them around and shoot your bulldozer. Now we have yet another flak panzer coming on to the field. So it looks like we're just going to have flak panzer versus M10 spam. Honestly, kind of surprised this mortar hasn't been doing more damage. Only got seven kills. I mean, you could just barrage the ground, just like use attack ground on wherever. There's a very good chance that you'll hit a raketin, honestly. <laughs> just uh, with dumb luck. And uh, just about got all of these raketins up to a V1. As I say, when they move at full speed and camouflage, that is just so deadly. These vehicles. And now Luna's starting to make a bit of a comeback. He's playing a risky game, just going for more and more M10s. He he himself could have gone for an anti-tank gun or two to keep these flak panzers back. 
and then would have been at no risk of dying to the Rakitans. Which uh, probably would have been a lot safer. Rakitans going quite deep here. I just can hear these M10 through the fog of war, even though they don't make that much noise. It's some, uh, some of the other tanks. Oh, that is the Lifeman grenades. But uh, Luna steadying the ship. Got control of the central VP now. Which is good because just over 100 VPs he kind of needs to hold on to those VPs. He wants to mount a comeback. A lot of manpower spear as well. Could be an idea to get some Jaegers. And then he would be able to pick up that bar as well. And there goes an M10 maybe. Nope. Gets away and it looks like they're repositioning, not retreating. This M10 is probably going to go down here. There it goes. Looks like he took down a machine gun though with that. Probably not a worthwhile trade. I don't think he needs another MG34. He does need the M10s to try and keep these flak panzers at bay, which are bleeding his infantry quite quite badly at this stage. And could this be the start of a comeback for Luna? And that is the 105. Which is on the center. Oh, and he gets the lieutenant! Whoa! Very late reaction by Meister Yoon. I mean, it could have backfired on him over here, but it didn't. But it did badly over here. He loses his lieutenant. That is a big bloke. He's going to get an anti tank grenade off here. Could he take down this flak panzer? Here comes N10. All of our kittens have retreated to base. Here they come now, though. N10 decides against chasing any deeper. Probably well aware the kittens are going to be up on their way. It's much of the Rakettans. Two of them still not quite bit one though, so as you can see they're getting outrun by their vetted counterparts. And he actually briefly reveals them, but I don't think that was spotted. It's just got them on attack move, it looks like. Which is the easiest thing to do. Oh, M10 misses his first shot, and so do the Rakettans though. Very long aim times on them, and there you go, it gets... Gets one flag pants, they're going for the next one. No squads in the base to protect. Should be the end of the last flag pants. Oh, but it's destroyed engine. Needs to stick around to finish the job. Oh, but he decides to back away. And just as another flag pants hits the field. Oh, lucky break for Luna. He's had a few good turns of uh, luck, and what's he doing? Takes a Faust, gonna go down to these Rakettans anyway. Thought maybe he would have been able to get away, but kind of just drove around here, end up taking a Faust. Goes down to those Rakettans. This is such a, this is such a ridiculous game. <laughs> this is like, can my intense dodge your four Rakettans? Like, what is this? He's actually going for another squad of opportunities. It's not a terrible idea for access to the extra Faust for taking down these MTNs. I'm really surprised Meister Yoon hasn't at some stage transitioned into at least a one anti tank gun himself. He's going after this one. Where are the Rakettans? Okay, they're all in base and he one shots the M10. Oh my god. He's just throwing these things away. He's got enough for another one, but is he going to transition? No, he's going for another bulldozer. Uh, and now we see some Jaegers. Did he cancel those? Did he cancel those uh, opportunities? Maybe he did. Let's make those Jaegers.
So can the bulldozer get something done? Remember, as I said, will not get one shot by all four of these kittens if they all connect at once. So that is something. But it's gonna need some big RNG hits. Take down these Rakesans. Perhaps could make use of the attack ground. On Rakesan connects, and there he goes, backing away. Or more like forward anyway, going forwards to dodge them. These flak pans are getting quite a lot of damage done, bleeding Meister you a lot, honestly. And this is going to be the end of the mortar. The old flak panzers raid against team weapons. It's like a never ending chain of flak shots. 50 cal sets up. Can do a little bit of damage with the armor piercing on. Oh, he just loses all the variancy from it. And he comes forward for one shot, but he's just so scared of the red kittens, he doesn't dare chase. It's a tough spot to be in because you kind of need your infantry to get in there, find out where the red kittens are, so you can maneuver your vehicles to take down the flak panzers. But obviously, the flak panzers there, just dishing it out to the squads. Very hard to do that. And it's not like having a major would help because the major would. Reconnaissance flights don't spot invisible units as far as I'm aware. Does have enough munitions now for some RNG bombs though. So maybe they shouldn't be called RNG bombs because they did reduce the scare on them a while ago. They don't scatter quite as much. Well here we go, he's using his Sherman for smoke can be very useful against a move for Rakesans. Oh, Rakesans charging over. He's dropped the, uh, he's dropped the artillery. Here's the first shell. Just misses the MG34. And 10 also got the hell out of there, dodging all those rotated Rakesans. Did he, just lose, did he just lose his own squad right there? He just <laughs> G-bombed his own squad. Oh, almost takes down the MG-34 again. There's another squad of Jaegers. No, must be the same squad, but once again diving for the VP. <laughs> it's going pretty poorly for my students. Coming back in. Perhaps he hasn't learned his lesson. And there's the M10 just skating away from this mass of Rakins there. This is one, no, not quite bit one, almost though. Just anything will get it to bit one, and once they're all vetted up, man, you just run them around in camo full speed. Not much you can do to stop it. That's why I'm surprised most of you are still insisting on continuing to make vehicles. Your opponent has this much tied up into anti tank. Perhaps it would be wise to just neutralize that by not fielding any tanks. He's just got empty pop cap there. Well, there goes one of the Rakesans, goes down to a shot from the bulldozer. Bulldozer gets away, as I was saying. This is the amount of health it has left after taking four Rakesan shots. Will not die. Can't pick up that bazooka either, except for me with the stern pies. And he is going to capture a Rikishin. So this is 
what he needs, what he's needed for a long time. This has two benefits really, because now he can also use it to just camouflage and kind of use it as a recon unit. He doesn't have to keep charging him with his rifleman to do the scouting. Find out where those flak panzers are, bleed him with a lot of manpower in the process. Okay, Wolverine and Raketa. No, Raketa misses. Wolverine misses as well. Second Wolverine around on the flank. This one backing away. Looks like maybe this one actually wasn't on prioritized vehicles. So perhaps it wasn't a miss. Maybe they're just shooting at infantry or something. There's something you have to remember to do. You have to reactivate prioritized vehicles after you've uh, jumped out with your crew to repair. It is another Flak Panzer, man. This is a. Uh, cool and met it. Full effect here, you got to see it. Oh, he's derping out there, getting caught on the VP flag and goes down to the Trooper Kittens with a bit of Flak Panzer on the rear. Feeling the VP pressure now. 33 VPs left. Whereas most of you still has a lot of time left. 332. Here goes another machine gun though. Most of army very, very small compared to Lunas now. So, so many tanks to these Rakettans. Emptying. I'm not sure what he's up to over here. Maybe coming in for a deep flank. There goes Oops, the stolen water, and he's actually retreating with these two. This could be the opportunity he needs. Here comes the M10 from the other side. This one can't face up in time, but he kind of gets blocked. Here's the arc, and this is just an attack move. Maybe I'll take down this Black Panzer, though. No, it doesn't look like it. Close, though. It looks like he went for attack ground there and almost landed. That would have been the end of the Flak Panzer as well. Oh, but the Bazookas. Oh, he has to retreat. There's a machine gun there covering it. It's getting suppressed. Once again, going for a VP harass over here, but there's a 50 cal that's just camped over here. Looks like he's going to get the neutralized, but won't be able to secure the cap. That's what he really needs, those. At 26 VPs, maybe my student, in fact, it looks like he's kind of just running over here with his tank. Maybe going to do some capping with the crew. Risky tactic. No. Coming in for another deep flank. He wants to get some of these low health Oswins. Did actually get the repair upgrade now for his mechanized regiment. Doesn't quite find the flak panzers, I think. Very, very close. If you uh, can hear them through the fog of war, repairing sometimes. Well, got some carnage. Bulldozer just cruising around, trying to dodge these raketons. And here come the M10 circling, going after the flak panzers. Quite a few of them are missing. Looks like this one's going to go down. Yep, there it goes. So we can get one of these Flak Panzers. No, he's got his rear arm exposed to the Flak Panzer. Will he be able to finish this Flak Panzer? No, he misses. Oh my god, this one's just sitting here doing nothing. Okay, there it goes. Flak Panzer didn't chase, so I think that's a mistake. Probably should have chased. Can't penetrate the rear arm of the bulldozer went down as well. Oh, and there's the howitzer barrage onto the garrison, tearing up that machine gun. Looks like it retreated, but perhaps that's why they weren't uh, microing those vehicles so effectively. 
And it looks like this could be the end of the captain as well. Needed those bazookas. So I just want to chase any further. Dreadstone squad only has one bazooka and one bar. Probably wouldn't have been better as a double bazooka squad. We're losing a capture point. Some fresh set of Jaegers deployed onto this VP. He's running out of the VP circle though. Big mistake. I see you're going to cap the center. The VP tick is going to be on just because he accidentally left this capping circle. Now he notices he gets back in there, but could this be the end? Infiltration grenades dodged. Do a little bit of damage, but Vet 2 folks can't really stand up to the Vet 3 double bar rifles. Pressure grenades do a lot of damage, but he still gets forced away. He's highly vetted rifleman with the weight in gold. Now the flat pans are coming in. Can this turn the tide? Looks like this squad's actually running straight for the VP. They're running into this flat panzer though. He's only got one bazooka unless he picked it up again. Ring covering the retreat there, trying to dodge these rockets still charging around. This one actually up to Vet 4. So, does it run faster? It looks like it run increases mobility. Maybe it's uh, more of a setup time. I think. She kind of getting lucky blocking vision behind the hedge. Luna hanging in there just by 321 VPs left. Got the M10 down here so we've got a few M10s from Meister Yoon. Can he finish off these flag panzers? And has got very lucky with a few of these artillery strikes and uh, flak pens is getting abandoned and such. But is his luck going to come to an end? It's been behind all game, as can often happen when playing OKW. It's another harassment. In fact, he's got a bazooka on that Jaeger Light Squad. Must be one of those captain bazookas. He just, did he just run right past that MG34, man. <laughs> Very clumped up. Instant retreat though, nice reaction times by Meister Yoon. And whoa, M10 actually got a shot on the main gun. Pretty rare sight. Who's Rakitin is this? I don't know, it's out there in no man, so maybe Luna's made another one. There goes one of the M10s. Nice ambush. All of them retreating now. So if the M10 can find the flak pans, it could do quite a lot of damage. But the flak pans is way back in base. Where is the Rakitin? Okay, that's reasonably defensive. But here come the flak pans. It's going to run right into it. M10 coming around on the flank. This could be the end of these flak panzers. And Rakitin misses. Still one of them could go down here. Rakitin's coming back out onto the field. Will this last shot land? It does. And there goes flak panzer. This MG34 actually gets flanked. Is harassing this VP, so it's going to be uh, neutral. Luna hanging in there desperately. But does the squad have the bazooka? No. So he should be able to beat this vehicle crew, unless they had the uh, Thompson upgrade. The vehicle crew's grease gun, just terrible. Much worse than the assault engineers.
but I mean, he's, yeah, maybe he's saving his munitions up for another 240 mil barrage that can make all the difference if one of those shells lands on a clump of rakitans. Let's see, a uh, game deciding moment, and Luna, very bold here, actually deciding to tick. There's truck coming out now, if she wants to set it up, covering this VP here. Should uh, really help his VP control. Nice to you and Patch making a slight mistake jumping into this garrison, not capping. Just charging in here, but unvetted riflemen, man, they are so squishy at this stage of the game. M10 going in after the Flak Panzer. Well, the Rakitans have retreated. Can he get it? Can he get it? No, he's, he's going for the 240 mil, so this will buy him a lot of time. I mean, he may have to risk running straight through this to get back onto the battlefield. Maybe, maybe it'll buy him enough time to uh, drain those last 20 VPs. I'm sure that's what he hopes. Takes down the tech truck. At no point did he change his rally point. All three of them came out here at some stage. Looks like he's going to kill this Rakitan. Good decision. Kind of surprised he didn't do this earlier. I suppose he wanted to steal it, actually. He's given up on that. Oh, some RNG shells. Looks like they're not doing too much so far. No, he's lost his stern pioneers. Oh! He's lost his fox units right there as well. He's only got one squad available for the Faust, but there we go. M10 charges in, dies to the triple Rakitans. He's going to try cap under the cover of smoke, get those last 20 VPs down. He's going for both VPs. Could send his Rakitans in to try and block the cap. Like that's what he's trying to do. Captain actually retreats very early. He's got to leave his machine gun out to die, though. Here comes another e M10. Gets the rear armor of these flak panzers, forcing them away. And my Stu hangs tough in the center against the Jaegers. Doesn't have enough manpower to deploy anymore. I think that's going to be game. Just has no way of capping the VPs here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lord. <coughs> well. We got to see some full-on call in action here, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I'll be glad when we see the end of this style of gameplay, honestly. Interesting, I mean, it was a, it was, I don't know. <laughs> it, was a, it was a weird game. <laughs> Somehow, I mean, Luna made those Rakitans work. They were just running around the map, sniping all sorts of vehicles. Very surprised most of you in no stage decided to just not make M10s. Maybe went for two anti-tank guns, one covering this VP, one covering this VP, and just camp it out for those last 30 VPs or so, because he had such good uh, army advantage at one, one point. Um, Luna had two squads of opportunity is a stern pioneer and just rakitans after i think it was so if my student at that stage has just tried to camp the last 100 vps this might have gone a bit smoother but he got the job done in the end that's all that matters anyway guys i'll wrap on that if you'd like your game to be cast by me details are in the video description below otherwise i'll catch you off the next thrilling installment goodbye and good luck